Hey guys, my name is Lauren Wynn and I did my project on memory and mnemonic devices. I did my research on the history of memory and I did my experiment on mnemonic devices and how effective they are. Um, so I was interested in this project because throughout the semester I noticed uh, students freaking out about getting bad grades on tests and they couldn't understand why they get it. They thought they had um, the information encoded at pretty well and that they studied so hard. Um, what I actually found out from my friends is that there's a lot of people who are studying but they're not using the right memory techniques to study. Um, so throughout my research uh, I found that we actually um, started studying memory way back when, when Aristotle was alive. Uh, he described our memory as a tabula rasa or a blank slate on which we inscribe our experiences on, which is actually very contradictory to what um, the traditional idea of memory was because people thought the natural memory, or people thought there were two parts to memory, a natural memory and an artificial memory. The natural memory is basically the memory that we are born with as uh, babies or as humans um, that we just kind of know. And then we have uh, an artificial memory, which is what we learn through our experiences and as we grow up. Um, then um, later on, uh, about 1700, an English philosopher, David Hartley, hypothesized that there was a physiological aspect to memory coding, which was revolutionary. It's not some we didn't even know for sure about that until, you know, nowadays, more recent. Um, it wasn't until Herman Ebbinghaus came along um, in about the 1800s uh, that he actually revolutionized a way to study memory. Um, his way was called the nonsense syllables test, which basically he came up with little triad words, basically three letter words with two, uh, consonants and a vowel, and they didn't really mean anything, but he put them together to see, you know, what people remembered and whatnot. Um, and also, as we learned in class, uh, he came up with the ideas of the learning curve and the forgetting curve, which is uh, the time it takes to learn something or the time it takes to forget something. Um, he also was the first one to even suggest that there were three parts to our memory. Um, he basically just called it the working uh, memory. Um, the sensory memory and the long term. Um, it wasn't until uh, Richard Atkinson and Richard Schifferin came up with the memory model that we know today, which is the modal memory, which is they actually gave a name to it with the three forms of memory the sensory, short term, and long term. However, it wasn't until Later on in 1974, when the idea of our working memory was actually proposed by Alan Baddeley and Graham Hitch. Um, and then around that time, you know, basically when computers were being revolutionized, they compared our memory to computer parts. Um, so, uh, for my experiment, um, I did it on a small scale. Um, I only had five participants because I tested out four different um, mnemonic devices. Um, basically, I gave each participant a list or four lists of um, words, each having ten words on it. Um, the first one, basically, they were told to study it for 10 minutes, no mnemonic device, uh, just study it, 
and then go about their daily business for two hours, come back, and tell me what they remembered, whether it was on the phone or over Skype or whatnot. Um, the second one was a list of ten words, and they were giving a set of flashcards with the words on it that they were to go through um, to help remember them. Um, again, it was uh, alternating of ten minutes and then two hours to go about their day, not worry about it, and then come back and let me know. Uh, the third list was basically I gave them a short story with the words in it that I made up um, and they were to read it over and over again for 10 minutes out loud and every time they came up to the bolded words which were the words on the list they were to enunciate it um, to help them kind of create an impact in their mind and uh, help them remember. And finally the fourth list uh, was the method of loci or like we saw in the video in class where the guy would go through his house um, and in each room he would apply two words to it and then um, you know that would help him remember the words because he would think of it the words as he was standing in the room that he was in. Um, so this was really interesting. Um, I actually found that yes the method of loci was the most effective one um, and then a close second was actually flashcards but I think that's because most people nowadays are used to using flashcards um, and so they kind of know the process and how to memorize it and whatnot. Um, then, uh, the third one was actually the story, which was very close to the, um, flashcard technique. And finally, of course, the no memory device one was the last. Uh, I think, you know, actually, uh, my husband was only able to remember two words from that list. So that was kind of interesting because, you know, obviously just staring at the paper doesn't help you remember something, which I know is what a lot of people do right before a test, just kind of sit there staring at the paper and flipping through um, right before and freaking out about it. Um, so again, you know, the relevance to our time was studying. Uh, memory devices are essential for good study habits. Um, I know I actually use things like the storytelling or the method of loci because uh, it helps me remember things like in biology, like if I'm learning about RNA, I know that there was one point that I likened something to a married couple producing, you know, a child I think it was for creating amino acid chains. So, you know, and it just, it helps me and I know that with the people that I've been tutoring throughout the semester, it's definitely, it's helped them as well. Um, I think we just need to teach techniques like these from younger age groups because most people getting into college nowadays don't know how to study and if we were teaching them younger then you know we wouldn't have to worry about them understanding things at the college level and passing classes at the college level instead of just struggling and kind of just chugging through so um so yeah that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you for watching um, and I really appreciate it.